How's it going guys? Cody back again, dropping yet another video. Right guys, <clears throat> this is a story in the Daily Mirror, uh, link in the description below like we always do. Uh, this is sadly and tragically about Daniel Raworth, um, who was found dead in his cell in January of 2018 at HMP Hull um, in East Yorkshire. Now, the reason that the story has only just come out is because obviously the inquest has taken place um, I'm going to read the story, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Um, even though it was a year and a half ago, over a year and a half ago, nearly two years in this coming January, uh, my thoughts and my prayers are very much with Daniel's family and friends. Um, worst place to lose somebody really, isn't it, in a cell? Just imagine, away from your loved ones, away from your children, locked up in a tiny cell. Um, yes, we've done wrong. But at the end of the day, there's no worse place in earth, for my, in my opinion, to leave this world than in a cell. Away from your friends, away from your family and away from your children. I'm going to leave it there, guys. Uh, let, we're going to read the headline and I'm going to get into it. So the headline reads, drug dealer dies in his cell after taking prescription drugs to lose weight. Daniel Raworth, God bless him, may he rest in peace, 33 was found unresponsive in his cell with his body facing the wall on January the 13th, 2018. A drug dealer was found dead in his cell after taking prescription drugs to lose weight, an inquest has heard. Daniel Rawworth, 33, was described as a popular inmate at the Hebden Road Prison, and his friends on the inside said he was determined to lose weight by any means necessary. Hull Coroner's Court heard the prisoner was found unresponsive in his cell with his body facing the wall on January the 13th, 2018. A fellow prisoner told the hearing via a statement that Daniel, described as a 6 foot 5 and 19 stone, had taken anything he could get his hands on in a bid to lose weight. Another prisoner said Daniel was feeling good about himself and said it was the best he had ever felt just the day before his death for in a game of badminton at the Category B prison. His mother describing him as, as a big Manchester United fan, football mad and a big drinker who was always the last one standing. Daniel, formerly of uh, Salamander Close, Grimsby, had complained to his mum of a bad cold but described him as looking at his best he had in a long time after losing weight from dieting and exercise. The jury listening to the inquest on Wednesday heard from the prison officers who described Daniel as popular who mixed well with other inmates had no health concerns on entering the prison, despite a mini stroke in 2015. On the morning of Saturday, January the 13th, 2018, Daniel's cellmate had tried to wake him, but he was cold to touch and noticed a bottle of pills at the end of his bed. Paramedics confirmed Daniel was dead and pronounced him dead at 9.56 a.m. after an emergency cold blue was called inside the prison. They said he had been dead for a number of hours. Daniel was jailed in November 2017 after pleading guilty to being concerned with dealing cocaine between September the 16th and November the 12th, 2016. He found himself behind bars for three years and six months after he also failed to provide Humberside police officers with the four-digit pin to unlock his phone. The hearing was told there was no traces of illicit substances were found in his system through during a thorough post-mortem uh, post examination. There were no marks on his body. All of his organs were in the normal range. The jury found in the medical cause of death as being drugs related after listening to the evidence. Dr. Kirsten Hope, who was the home office pathologist said, it's possible the drugs could have affected Daniel's breathing and a sudden cardiac event could have been likely. Dr. Hope said these drugs together could have resulted in an irregular heart rhythm or slowing down of his breathing the combination could have happened overnight. Three prescribed drugs were found in his system, but none of them were illicit substances. Despite the findings from two separate reports, it is impossible to tell which had been the catalyst for the prisoner's death. She added, he may not have had the tolerance of its adverse effects. Substances which included pregabalin, morphine, and a metallic breakdown of antipsychotic drugs, asinapine, quetiapine, were all found in his system in small quantities. The inquest heard that Daniel had entered the prison drug free and none of the substances, none of the substances had been subscribed to him. I think they means prescribed. However, 
Prison welfare bosses said the drugs were very tradable in prison and it could have been abused. She said people, inmates, find ways and means to find drugs. They can get prescriptions and though even though it's not the drug that they need, they know they can sell them or trade them or use it as currency. It's a constant battle. We are trying to minimize the risk for every day. The manager who was the head of residence and safety at the prison said body, can, body scans had significantly reduced the amount of drugs found in prisons. <clears throat> she also added that Daniel had been a model prisoner and the authority had no problem with him. A police investigation found his death not to be suspicious or involve any third party involvement. Summing up the evidence, Assistant Coroner Lorraine Harris said Daniel lost two stone during his first six, two months in the prison and was looking forward to leaving prison. A jury of six men and four women returned a conclusion of misadventure. Now, it's a big old boy, six foot five, 19 stone, bless him. <clears throat> but just let's go back to this. So, where is it? So, substances in his, in his system were pregabalin, which is a strong nerve agent, morphine, uh, pain relief, and a, meta a met metabolic breakdown of antipsychotic drugs asinapine and quetiapine right oh, they could have all counteracted with each other and stuff but guys the thing is not every death in custody right that comes out like this is like i say for me that's suspicious circumstances do you know what i mean now like i say when you're in prison a lot of prisoners unfortunately develop addictions whether that be to just to get off the face for a few hours um or like this prisoner to potentially lose weight now like i said he lost two stone in his first few months in the prison um six foot five is obviously a big unit of a lad but um what the prison when there's a death in custody guys right what the prison say and what prison officers say and what the truth is is two very different versions of events um and like i said there could have been more to this story um if, if, if anyone's loved one dies in prison, right, in any which way, do not take what the prisons say at face value because the prisons have got a reputation to try and protect. Um, and remember, this is a home office pathologist, right? Again, I would want an independent uh, pathologist. Uh, but at the end of the day, guys, it's a sad and tragic event. Uh, Daniel Raworth, God bless him, at the age of 33, uh, sadly passed away as a result. I like I say, when people are in prison, um, because it said there that these these um, medications had not been prescribed to him. Um, you just gotta you've got to ask yourself serious questions and stuff. And like I say, drugs are readily available. Prescribed medication in prison, like when I was at Strange Ways, I was given um, medication in my possession. Then when I went to a Category B prison, Forest Bank. You used to have to go to the medical hatch or the medical hut. Um, you'd go, you'd have like a little paper cut. They'd put your medication in it, show me prison ID card. they get your meds, they give it to you. Prison officer standing there, little little glass of water, net your water, net your meds. And then the screw would say, open your mouth, show your mouth. So you go, ah, and you'd open your mouth. Not all the time, though. I've seen kids cheeking. Um, there was a kid that was on the script of methadone, and he just put it in his mouth, swilled it, Kept it in his mouth, uh, 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 walked off, spat it back into a fucking cup and give it to one of the other lads on the wing. It goes down that way. Um, but yeah, all medication has got a price in prison, but there, there are a lot of prisoners that will take any drug they can get their hand on quite literally just so they can get themselves off the face or they've got addictive tendencies or it's a coping mechanism in prison. As I've seen kids go to prison with a long line of addictions before they came to prison, and then they've taken every drug they can get their hand on, and will do anything to get their hand on them drugs. Um, and then yeah, I've seen kids go to prison having never taken drugs before in their life, and uh, becoming spice heads and getting on any drug they can get their hand on, because the, it, by getting off the face, it, they escape the reality with the surroundings for a few hours. Um, but the amount of drugs I've seen prisoners take is just unbelievable. And um, unfortunately, the, the prison go on about all oh, body scanners. Prison officers, right, we know how it comes in. We know different ways it comes in. We know people plug. We know people it goes on. We know it goes on in visits. It used to go over the wall. We know about drones. 
<clears throat> one line that never comes up in these stories prison officers bring drugs in and like i say if you're a dealer you're, you're loving it aren't you if you've got a screw on the payroll you're laughing but what you're not laughing at is when you've got you've got families like this that go through loss um because like i said where you've got contraband in prison you've got debt where you've got debt you've got fear intimidation bullying and violence um this is a story out of h and Hall, guys. God bless, God bless even Daniel Raworth's friends and family. My heart goes out to them massively so. Um, I put a picture of him at the start. Um, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Link is in the description if you, if you would like to read the full story. I'm going to leave it there, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Cody out.